Good morning, Algebra. We're start, starting the second half of Chapter 8, Part 2, Factory. 8-5 is the distributive property. And three things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the distributive property, and we're really going to kind of talk about undistributing, dividing out a common factor. Um, we're going to talk about factoring by grouping, and then we're going to talk about solving once it's factored. In example one, where we're talking about the distributive property, the book does not give you enough credit for being able to look at things and say, hey, I can look at those and say, hey, nine goes into 27 and 18, and they both have a Y, okay? So that's what you're going to take out. This is 9y times 3y plus 9y times 2. This is my greatest common factor. So I'm going to divide it out. And then I'm going to have 9y times 3y plus 2. Okay, so we're just dividing out that common factor. Whereas in the earlier part of the chapter, we were distributing through to get rid of parentheses. Now we want that chunk back, okay? In example B, there are three terms. And all of you can look at that and say, hey, they're all even. And they all have an AB. So this is 2AB times negative 2A. This is um, 2AB times negative 4B. And this is 2AB times 1. The 1's important, okay? All right, so see, I'm going to take this 2AB out, okay? And then I have 2AB times negative 2A minus 4B plus 1. I started with a trinomial. I've got a trinomial in my chunk. Okay? Now, if this would have been a minus and all of them were negative, my GCF would be negative. I would divide out a negative. But because it's a positive, I can leave it, okay? All the guided practice are done in my notes, which I posted on Edmodo this morning, okay? The second thing we're going to look at in example two is factoring by grouping. That's when you have four or more terms, okay? And we're going to just put them in pairs, okay? So when I group them in pairs, i got to have that plus in the middle. And yes, it's got to be a plus. can't be a minus. If it was a minus, I would change it to plus a negative. But I'm looking at this and I'm saying, oh, they're both multiples of 4. And they both have an R. So I'm going to pull out um, a 4R. Okay? So this is 4R times Q. And this is 4R times 2. When I pull out the 4R, I've got G or Q. It's a Q. A silly girl. Uh, Q plus 2 left. Okay? On this one, all I'm going to pull out is a 3. I've got 3 times Q plus 3 times 2. And I'm going to have plus 3 times Q plus 2. My chunk has to be identical. Has to, has to, has to. And then you're probably looking at that and saying, eh, what do I do with that now? This is your new GCF, and you got to pull it out. So I'm going to have Q plus 2, and look at what's left. 4R plus 3. That goes in here. Now it is completely factored, okay? Could I check it? Absolutely. That's the nice thing. 
see, I can just multiply this back. Look what I get. 4RQ, that's what I started with, plus 8R plus 3Q plus 6. So I can check with FOIL. That's another way that you can know that you did it right. Susan, what if I change the order? What if I want to put all the cues together? Can I still do it? Of course. I'm just going to group them again in pairs. Okay. Here, all I can pull out is a Q. And I'll have 4R plus 3. Here, all I can pull out is a factor of 2. And I'm going to have... 4R plus 3. See, that chunk has to be identical. This is my new GCF, so i got to pull it out. And what do I have left? Q plus 2. Notice, that's the same thing as I got when I did it the other way. This is kind of like the prime factorization of that polynomial. And the prime factorization of something is unique. Okay? So again, I did all the guided practice in my notes. You need some in your notes to practice because this is very different. You've never done anything like this before. Okay, let's continue. All right, example three. Here's where changing the order can help. Because when I put together my pairs, I'm looking at that and I'm saying, wait a minute, this has a K in front, this has a K in the back. I want to switch those around. Now, remember that minus goes with that 7. So the first one's going to stay the same. The second one becomes negative 7K plus 42. Okay? Now, you probably can look at this. Now, you could change the order even more and put the Ks together. Okay, but I've got my Ms together. Okay, so I'm looking at this and I can pull a 2M out of both of those. That's going to leave me with a K minus 6. So, guess what I need over here? I need a K minus 6 because my chunk has to be identical. So what am I going to take out? Negative 7. Okay, this is my new GCF. Got to pull it out. What do I have left? 2M minus 7. Could I check it? Absolutely. It would check with FOIL. Okay, now I've got guided practice 3B because I want to switch because, again, that puts it in standard form. But when you look at this carefully, you do not want to simplify. Do not simplify because you don't know what to do with a trinomial and a square. Okay? You'll learn those later. Okay, I changed it to plus and minus because I've got to have that plus in the middle. Okay. All I can take out of this is a P. And that gives me negative 2P plus 3. Now over here, I've got to have a negative 2P plus 3. So what do I take out? 9. And it's a plus 9. Okay, because the negative stays. This chunk is identical. It's my new GCF. Negative 2P plus 3. What's left? P plus 9. Okay? Do try them in your notes because they're different. Now, part 2 is about solving. The zero product property says that if A times B equals 0, Product, product, A times B equals zero, 
then A equals zero, B equals zero, or they both equal zero. Okay, look at example four. Man, they did all the work. They already factored it. Don't foil it, okay? I just have to figure out 2D plus six, what makes that equal to zero? And 3D minus 15, what makes that equal to zero? So subtract six from both sides, 2D equals negative six, D equals negative three, add 15 to both sides, 3D equals 15, D equals five. So that means that if D is negative three, it's gonna equal zero. If D equals five, it's gonna equal zero, okay? But it is called the zero product property because if you look at example B, it doesn't equal zero. Okay, the zero product property won't work unless it equals zero. So the first thing I need to do is change it to three uh, C squared minus three C equals zero. Now you might look at it and say, well, but I can divide both sides by C. What is C? Okay, you don't know. That's why you've got to set it equal to zero. C is one of my factors, okay? I can't just divide by it because I don't know what it is. Does that make sense? So then either C equals zero or C minus three equals zero. And if C minus three equals zero, then C equals three. So I know that if C is zero, it equals zero. And if C is three, it equals zero, okay? Hope that helps you understand it a little better. We'll talk to you later, bye.